Let's say you are again starting coding from scratch. So how would you start over? There is a formula to crack companies. You don't have to be master in advanced level problems. You get into some uh, dietary company and they will gain one to two year experience in them. Experienced people, there are a lot of you know market. This is Nega Nagi, NVIDIA employee who had also cracked offer from ISRO while her college, but rejects it and opted NVIDIA. Hi Nega, thank you for joining. Hello, thank you yeah. for inviting me. Let's say you are again starting coding from scratch. First, how would you learn to code? I think I'd start with learning one coding language. C++ have more libraries. So C, you can say it's more closer to hardware level. C++ is more user friendly and Python is most user friendly. This is 2025. According to you, which is the best programming language one should learn if they are starting from beginning? C and C++ because it's more closer to hardware level. So you understand more stuff because in Python, there are more libraries and stuff. So you don't have to do everything. Thing, you know, on scratch, you lose that comfort on languages which are closer to hardware. And then I'll start my DSA journey, data structure and algorithm. DSA for sure, I can say there is a formula to crack companies. You don't have to be master in advanced level problems, but there are set of topics that you have to be comfortable with. Go to Geeks for Geeks, search for their data structure and algorithm. They have made a very good detailing of uh, from the beginning level, then medium level, and then advanced level. And once you do 10 to 12 different kind of questions of one particular topic you get comfortable with and move on to another. Okay. See, you might have done many courses for mastering coding. According to you, which are the best ones? I followed Geeks for Geeks. There's basic uh, information there for DSA. What are the basic level topics for DSA? Then come medium, then advanced. And okay. I chose some YouTuber. So one of the YouTuber that I followed is uh, Aditya Varma. Before the final step, good news. Sneha shared her NVIDIA resume with us and in later parts, Sneha gave a breakdown of it. Along with Sneha's insight, let me share one more method on the fastest way to learn coding and get a job in 2025. It's just to skip the endless tutorials and jump right into building real projects with industry professionals. And that's exactly what Mirai School of Technology delivers. Their program thrown you into AI and machine learning from day one with hands-on projects like chatbots and computer vision, guided by experts from Google, Amazon, and Meta. The founders Arpit Sarda, Karthik Mathur, and Varun Kohli have a proven track record with thousands of students placed a top company. Admission is through Mirai Mains exam, a 90-minute at-home multiple choice test covering math, logic, and problem solving. No coding experience required. Plus, there are generous scholarships including up to 100% fee waivers and extra support for girls and defense families. With limited seats, it's an incredible chance to launch your tech career. I have added the registration link in the description. Do check it out. I'll follow mm. these steps. Then, I'll pick out the projects. I'll see in what type of companies I want to work. That's something pick a project uh, in a way that will be helpful in your dream job. In this process, like nowadays, there are many AI tools trending and do you also try using that particular tool to help you in your learning process? I watched one video of Ishan. Maybe you want to learn about React components. So instead of taking a course, just simply ask it, create a React component for swiping mechanism in a and it will do it for you and it will show you how it wrote, what it wrote. And then you will learn how to create something from scratch. Look at its answer. Once you analyze your mistake, then try building it yourself again. And just this process of constantly trying to make something, looking at the thinking logic part of it, and then building it yourself and cross-checking if you did it right or not. So how you are seeing that? Would you think like that is actually beneficial? I mean, yes, to some extent, but when you rely too much on that, you will stop thinking yourself. Because at some point, you will also have to think that how should I think about it? How my brain works and how I can correlate things. It's, it's like a person as a YouTuber explaining you how he comes to the solution. For moving further, the reason we made this video is few days back on a recent conversation with Snega Nagi, I understood that nowadays many tier 2 tier 3 students cracking high paying job in big tech companies which Snega Negi got by investing two years in gate preparation and two years on her mtech at IAC. So this podcast is an attempt to help every tier 2 tier 3 students to a learn coding from zero and get good at it b how to land a high paying job from tier 2 or tier 3 college now that we have
have completed the first part, let's move on to the second part and let's start with the resume. Can you give a small breakdown of resume? How did you structure your resume that got you in NVIDIA? We keep it in one page only. Then I did education, wrote my master's and then BTEC. You don't have to write your school. Then there was the section for skills and then comes uh, coursework because I was doing master's from IIC. So I thought it's relevant if I write what courses I did. Then the section was for projects where I write my project. Five to six projects I wrote. And then if there was a section for assignments if there are some particular assignments that you think are helpful you write assignments one sentence in each sentence you can write what was the assignment and okay. if you have any holistic achievement let's assume for a moment that you didn't have one for advantage of studying in a prestigious institutions so how would you land up media or big big companies i think it's easier these days uh, make sure that you have the basic level knowledge of dsa because every company asks that then second thing is project based on what role you want to get into so mostly there are three roles there are in market machine learning related sd related job system software engineers you will have to focus on those kind of projects and then learn any additional skills that the project require get into some dietary company or maybe some startup they will get into and they will gain one to two year or three year experience in them for experienced people there are a lot of market but i see the light from far away it's down the line maybe i should not give up without a fight